I don't know if we've ever shared um, how you actually came to know the Lord, but I would love for you to share that story. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's the same for black people. So I believed in my heart, <laughs> and then I confessed my mom. I'm just playing. So, uh, okay, so part of this is in the book, but not the whole thing. So I was living in New York City. My address was 1997 Lumina Drive. Um, I drove a 1997 Lumina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was living in my car. So, <laughs> so, I'm, so I'm literally living in my car. Oh, my goodness. And even then, even before I knew Jesus, I didn't want to lie. Mm-hmm. So oh. I would park my car on the east side of the street. So some other comedians asked me where I live. I was like, I live on the east side. I literally do that. <laughs> so I'm living in my car, and I do a show at the Comic Strip Live, and George Wallace sees me at the Comic Strip Live. And he says, wow, you're funny and you're clean, because I didn't even curse before I was a Christian. And he said, I'd love for you to do a show with me. So I said yes, but I didn't ask him if he was going to pay, because that's not something you ask somebody. You'd be like, how much am I going to get paid? I'm a brand new comedian in New York City. Yeah, living on the east side. Living on the east side. <laughs> So I was rationing. What I would do is I would wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning. And I'd, well, I'm sorry. I normally wake up at 6, but I started waking up at 11 because I didn't have enough money for breakfast. So I was basically having sleep for breakfast. I get a meatball sub, cut it in half. It was $5. I eat that half at around 11.30. You didn't know about intermittent fasting at that point. Not at all. I didn't even know about E. coli poisoning at that point, too, because I ate the other half at 9 o'clock. Right. Oh, my gosh. And then, uh, and then I'm sitting there. I'm excited. I got this show with George Wallace. And I'm on Thursday. And that day was Monday, but then I started doing the math. I only had like $8, and I needed two more meatball subs, and I only got $8. And the problem is, is the show was in New Jersey. If I go to New Jersey, I can get to the show. Yeah. But I don't have enough for the tolls to get back, which means I would be stuck in New Jersey. The reason I was oh. stuck in New York, I was literally stuck in New York because I didn't have enough money because the shows in New York pay $12 a night. So I'm just living in my car. I don't know what I'm going to do. So I went to, I decided, okay, I'm just going to go do this show. And I get there, and uh, George Wallace said, my best friend is going to be there. I didn't know what his best friend was. I get to the show. It's me, George Wallace, Jerry Seinfeld. Oh, my gosh. Right. And, and I am tripping. We, I did two shows. I got two standing ovations. I rip. But at the end of the show, nobody is giving me any money. And I don't know who to ask. George Wallace leaves, his, Jerry Seinfeld leaves, the whole cr- everybody's leaving, and I'm borderline loitering right now. And I don't know where I'm going to go. And I remember uh, getting ready to leave, and a manager walks up to me, and he says to me, hey, Mike, we got a great set. And I'm thinking, he about to give me some money because yeah. I've got nothing, yes. <laughs> yeah. And this dude says to me, hey, uh, would you like to go to church with me on Saturday? I mean, uh, this weekend? Uh- <laughs> I was like, church? I need yeah. some money. I'm not going to church, man. Yeah. Back up. I was like, no, nah, I'm, I'm cool, man. I ain't going to go to church. So then I just went to the bathroom because the one in my apartment didn't exist, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I go to the bathroom. I come out, and there's this and there's this lady who is beautiful. She pales in comparison to my wife now, but she was beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> and she said to me, she said, did you talk to my husband, the manager? I said, uh, maybe. And I'm just staring at her because she was beautiful. And she said, um, well, we were wondering, would you like to go to church with us? She has some kind of accent. And without knowing it, I said, yes. I said, yeah, I was just looking for a church, man. Shoot, let's go to church. And I go to this, and I, I, she offers me to go to this church, and she gives me a napkin with the address on it. It's a New York City address. I can't get to New York. Yeah. I only got 38 cents to my name. I'm like, and my, my reality came crashing down. So I get ready to leave the, the club, and then nobody's there except for the bouncer's still there. And I'm leaving, I'm walking to my car. I don't know where I'm going to go. I have no plan at all. I don't know what I'm going to do. And um, the bouncer says, yo, Mike Jr., big dude, swollen dude. Might have been Terry Crews or somebody. Like, just swole <laughs> up. And, we, and, it, and I, he said, man, you had a great set. I had never met this dude except for on my way in. And he gives me a slap. Like, black people are like, pow. Mm-hmm. But the slap wasn't as crisp as it normally is. And the reason it wasn't that crisp is because he was exchanging some money in my hand. And he said to me, George Wallace told me to give you a little something, something. And I didn't look because you don't look at it. You just yeah. you got you can't look. Yeah. And I'm staring at him, and he's staring at me, and my eyes start getting watery. And I'm like, this is weird. I'm just looking <laughs> at this dude. And I take the, and I don't even look at the money. I go to my car. Mm-hmm. I get into my apartment door, and um, <laughs> and I'm sitting there, and for whatever reason, I open up one finger at a time, and I'm opening up, and the, the and as I'm looking, my eyes start to tear because I notice there's two hundred dollar bills in my hand. Wow. wow. And after my eyes on water, I noticed the next thing I see is that napkin on the passenger seat of my car. And I said, I'm going to go to church. And I went, and that's where I got saved at, like wow. days later. Wow. Pretty dope. 
So was that kind of your really first encounter with understanding who Jesus was? Had you anybody ever talked to you about that before? Nobody ever told me anything. I mean, people did. They were on stage and they were screaming and yelling with phlegm and they throw, ah, ah. <laughs> so I didn't understand it. It was just super weird. And now, yeah. but once I went to that church, Christian Culture Center, Brooklyn, Brooklyn New York, A.R. Bernard, oh, yeah. once I went there. I love him. We love him. He was, yeah, dude was just bringing it plain and simple in a simple way. He wasn't no phlegm. He wasn't sweating. <laughs> He's such a good guy. Yeah, he is. He is. Just smart. He's yeah. really smart. We always see him when we go to New York, and he just has such wisdom yeah. and insight and gentleness. I love that about Absolutely him. gentle yeah. as well, man. He was just bringing it. I was like, man, this makes sense. And in the music, I'm all crying. I'm all, uh, <laughs> and then I, and I told myself I'd read the Bible before I gave my life to Jesus. So I read the Bible in 36 days, the whole Bible. Wow. And then I remember going up to the altar and giving my life to Jesus, like, during the announcements. I was like, I know you got a picnic, but <laughs> I'm ready for this right now. So. so that is so amazing. I love that story. And, like, for people who are watching right now and you hear that, and many of you know the Lord, there may be someone watching who doesn't know the Lord. Maybe you just tuned in because you heard Michael Jr., speaking or you heard his little comedy routine a while ago, what would you say as to why you made that decision and has it stood the test of time like for people who are watching? Oh yeah, I would say um, it's the greatest decision like ever because I knew, like I didn't drink, I didn't smoke, I didn't, I never had alcohol before. I had NyQuil once. Oh, that stuff is crazy. <laughs> So I've never had any of that. So I used to think Jesus was just for those people who had those issues. Uh, okay. I didn't even curse. Mm -hmm. So Jesus must have been for those people. But then That's when I amazing. Like, the like, I just didn't even curse. When I was 14 years old, we just, me and my friend decided we made a deal. We wouldn't curse anymore. If he heard me curse, he could hit me in the chest hard as he wanted to and vice versa. And it just stuck. Mm -hmm. So Jesus must have been for those people. But then I, I got to a point in my life where I'm like, you got, it's got to be more than just this. I'm making all these people laugh and we're having all this fun. But... There's got to be more. Mm -hmm. So once I realized I couldn't figure out what the more was, I just completely released it. I said, okay, God, if this is you, I want you to just do your thing. And he has absolutely been doing it ever since. It is funny how life, life works. works.